What's up, baby? Welcome to Refragging. I'm your host, Drew Face, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Scooter. And we are going to be giving you a little surprise today. We are here on a, this is going to be coming out on a Wednesday, and uh, we've decided to change it up. We're going to be doing two episodes a week, one coming out on Wednesday, get you through the week, and then one on Friday so you can unwind and relax and just listen to us kind of go on a little bit. And, uh, you know, today it was also the wrap-up of E3, and how, how you feeling after it? All right, Nintendo stole the damn show, baby. It was so good. Nintendo show was amazing. It literally did everything. It did the bare minimum. That's why it was amazing. <laughs> it did the bare minimum. This E3 has been so bad. People are paying thousands and thousands of dollars to like be an exhibitor at, at this digital festival, and they're not presenting anything. They're like, yeah, uh, we're we're a Japanese game company, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna present to you nothing we already did this in the press release but nintendo was like what's up baby you got some games first thing they, they literally this was the first three minutes two japanese guys get a translator speaking through a translator tell me welcome to nintendo direct we're really excited to talk about games today cut to cut to the first smash announcement and it's kazuya and tekken that's the great like where, there was no, there was no foreplay. There was no foreplay. They just went in raw dog, and they were like, "We don't care about having a song and dance. You want to talk about games? You want to see games? We're Nintendo. We give you games." And that's what I saw. I saw a guest character from another franchise make his first fucking appearance in in Smash. Now Smash is almost like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In fact, it's probably way more deeper. There's 40 franchises in the Smash Universe right now. Incredible. It, that's how they started the show. It was uh, Nintendo killed it, dude. I can't, I don't, I don't understand. Like these motherfuckers, I don't get it. For that's once, all you had to do. Everybody had to show video games. <laughs> for once, it wasn't a Fire Emblem character. No. He didn't have a sword. He's got fixed, and he's the most violent character in Smash history. This motherfucker's killed people. <laughs> he's 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 done genocide. This guy's done genocide in the video game. He's caused wars. He's in a video game. This is crazy. He's in a kids' videos party game. It's insane. I'm sorry. That I was so excited. I sat there. I was like, "What the fuck?" And he moved exactly like he would in Tekken. And I was sitting there like, "How the fuck are Smash players?" Already gonna, but they don't know how to do this already. What the fuck? <laughs> like, this is, I don't know. I was, it I was mean, such a great opening. It's like one of the greatest openings of an E3 for a fighting game fan of all time. Like, it was, it was amazing. Like, I, I just, fuck, dude. <laughs> I mean, Ninten Nintendo truly blew it out of the park. Like, obviously, there were some things missing. For example, Pokemon. I yeah, kind of wish, yeah. but they'll do a Pokemon Direct. So that'll probably yeah. be soon. But they had, they were like, hey, Remember how we messed up the, the old Mario or the new Mario party? Okay, here's the old Mario party. Perfect. Yeah. That's all we want. New games, new controls and everything. And then they were like, hey, remember that other game you played on the GameCube, WarioWare? Here's that. Here's a new version of that. Like, I just don't... WarioWare, WarioWare. When they announced WarioWare, I threw my chair across the, the, the room. I was like, that's it. They won the show. That's one of my favorite game series of all time. It's so and fun. They, it's so fun. It's so variety. And it, it's so funny. It's a comedic game and it's amazing. And like, they're just like, yeah, you guys like where we were. Here's a surprise. They finally, su uh, Nintendo just literally did the bare minimum. They're just like, yeah, we didn't hire like, I don't know, Cardi B to do a song and dance, but we got Wario where, and we got Advanced Wars, the remake by way forward, a company I trust, a company that, that knows how to remake games. To, to to a very authentic and detailed level, they, they and then they showed Metroid. They showed a new two D like Nintendo was just out here. They put their dick on the fucking table and they're like, "Yes, yes, this is a great game. Here you go. We have games. Watch games." I'm like, "All right, all right you're doing what you're saying. This is this is wild." I just went. I sat through th like twelve hours of footage of people just just, just talking about like. Really important stuff like inclusivity and stuff. But I came here to watch a game show, right? I came here to watch new games. I love the inclusivity stuff. I'm a POC. I'm a really tired of POC. I do not look like I belong in the game industry, all right? But that's why I play video games. I feel like I belong. I get it. That conversation is very important. 
But I came here to play some games. I came. I, I show me the games first. Talk to me about this after. I really want to listen to it. But talk to me. Nah, like the, Nintendo just did their job. <laughs> yeah, they, dude. Just it was so like you said at the start. It's so underwhelming from everyone else. Like even Bethesda. Like I expected. Come on, they didn't even show Elder Scrolls. Like what the fuck? You've been teasing it for like the past two years, and you don't even talk about it. Like. I get it. They might be saving it for another convention, but come on, even give us another five second trailer of mountains. That would have probably held me over. They, they, if they even said, yo, we ported Skyrim to PS5. Like I would have been like, all right, cool. You did your bare, like, but yeah, that was the, that was the bare, bare minimum. minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bethesda. And then they're like, uh, yeah, we, uh, we have an expansion pass for the one of the buggiest games of all time. Yeah. That's our new announcement. And, uh, I don't know about other things because I fell asleep halfway through. That's how boring you are, Todd Howard. Thanks. <laughs> are you are you surprised they didn't announce the Switch Pro? Uh, I actually I am. I'm I'm very. I thought they would. I I really thought they it would. It seemed like the right timing because like you know the past couple of months I'd say like once a week Twitter blows up like trending Switch Pro and I every time I click on it expecting something like a leak. And it's, it's like not nah, just trending. Yeah. yeah, it would have been the perfect time to do it. I, you know what they they might. So, I know that Nintendo is a Japanese company for years, and Capcom, and because I play fighting games, I know this. Like all the Japanese companies, E three is not really a, a priority in terms of it is a priority, but not as big as a priority as Tokyo Game Show, right? Maybe at Tokyo Game Show they'll show it, uh, which comes in like I think in July or something, or uh, we will have to double check on that, but. It, they'll probably announce it there. That's like, that's a little more important for them. But I, yeah, this would have been the perfect time to do it. Really, you're right. It's it's just kind of strange that like there's so so many like leaks and rumors and you know like one thing I thought was really interesting. What do you think about it? That it, the fact that it's gonna be well supposedly gonna be as expensive or more expensive than like PS5. Uh. That's like, did Nintendo make a computer? Like, what are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be like, hard to sell. Like, it, that's a really difficult sell. Like, but if they drop it with Breath of the Wild two, as a bundle, yeah, uh, like as a bundle, make a special edition, maybe. I mean, do you want to devalue your? Because like Nintendo at this point, yeah, they make hard like hardware, but like they're a software company essentially. Oh yeah, they they make all their money from like amazing video games like video yeah, games are exclusive like, all those exclusive yeah so it's like it, do they really want to devalue and nintendo never discounts their games right so oh never they do they want to devalue breath of the wild 2 like that just to, to throw it in as a i mean like they, they've done it for years but like to like release it simultaneously with I like mean, a new with a really risky risk, risky console i think the big thing is and the one it's like the only company that I can think of that gets away with it. When Nintendo bundles games, it's usually not cheaper. It's usually the same as like, like I think the, I think it was the Mario Kart. No. Mario Kart 8. Yeah. Was it the Mario Kart bundle? Yeah, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah. I bought it. Yeah. I think they, I think that was just the same price as if you had bought the Switch. Oh yeah. And bought the game. Cause it came with a physical copy if I'm not wrong. No, no, it didn't. It came with the, Mine came with the digital. Oh, maybe was early digital? on. Yeah, maybe early on on launch it came with the uh, physical, but mine was for sure digital, and it was literally three seventy nine, which was like that's how much a switch in the game cost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, all right, like I love you, but like I, I mean, I'm buying it. I love Mario Kart. Like I bought it. Like I'm a soccer dude. Yeah. I'm a soccer dude. <laughs> See, that's how Nintendo gets you because every time, like even like Pokemon, Pokemon is a key example. You're like, I want to play Pokemon. Well, I can't play it on PC. I can't play it on my Xbox. I can't play it on my PlayStation. I got to go buy a Switch. Even yeah. Breath of the Wild, same thing. I wanted to play Breath of the Wild so bad. I could have played it on the Wii U, but I want to play it on the Switch. Right. And, you know, I, I fucking love Breath of the Wild. And, you know, no better segue than any. What'd you think of Breath of the Wild 2? They're going vertical, baby. We're gonna see the skies. We're gonna see the skies. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Like, I like they, they, they. You can tell they care so much about the quality of that game. They're like, 
Uh, we can't give you a hard date because we don't want this to be a bad game. Like, in summary, I'm paraphrasing, but that's literally what A.G. Onimu said. He was like, we're really working hard on this game. Uh, here's what we can show you because we don't want you guys to feel unsatisfied. Which, by the way, testament to Nintendo once again. They literally just did the bare minimum. They're like, yeah, uh, we're going to show you Breath of the Wild. And this is what we made so far. Yeah, and that's what they did. barely showed. anything. Like it was barely anything, but it was like more than obviously last time. It was way more than last time, but like it was still not not enough. But they're like, yeah, it's there, and I was excited. I was like, thank God, I'm showing me something. <laughs> like I, I I felt hook, line, and sinker, baby. I fell for it. <laughs> I was like, all right, thank you. Thank, I'm I'm satisfied. I can wait. And they're like, is we're trying to make it come out 2022. We don't know when. That's literally what they said. We don't fucking know when, but it's coming out in 2022. And we're like, all right, yeah, sure. Take your time. We understand you like making quality game. I get it. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I think I'm, Nintendo as well is one of the like the only company, actually probably the only company, that has never launched a game that felt broken. Yeah, but, like because I don't know they're just patient and like they have delayed games and it's like okay, you know what? Like we're okay with the delay because if you think it, like if Nintendo thinks it needs a delay, it definitely needs delayed. So here's my issue. Like most modern games nowadays, right? They come out almost half assed every single time, right? Like I'm playing a game called Guilty Gear Strive right now. The gameplay itself is fantastic. The net code, it's the best fighting game net code to ever exist in a triple A fighting game title. Nothing else works. Nothing. Nothing works for it. The lobbies don't work. I like you, you'll fail to connect to a match and the guys are like the person you're meeting is in front of you and by the way it's using the most convoluted lobby system of all time right and then on top of that none of the menus work because you have to wait for the game to access the servers and there's now you now people are speed running how fast they can connect to the server to get to the main menu of the game and by the way the fast time is three minutes and 34 (laughs) seconds right I'm, i'm not joking with you this is these are things that are happening people are releasing games like this right Nintendo's out here saying, look, you're going to give us a billion dollars, but you know why? You trust us. You trust us when we release a product. You don't have to wait three minutes and 34 seconds to get to the main menu. So then you can wait another three minutes and 34 seconds to get to the training mode. No, no, they don't do that. You know what they do? They're like, yeah, um, we're going to make Link fall from the sky like it's Fortnite uh, because we're adding the sky to the game. You know, you could go in the fucking sky in Zelda because, you know, our first game, Breath of the Wild, the reason why it was called Breath of the Wild is because you could breathe in the fucking valleys of the air that's endless. You know, it's a free-forming sandbox Zelda game. They're like, yeah, you know, we did that on the ground. Now, let's try to do it in the sky. That was literally what they said. They're like, that's the first three words this guy said. He's like, hi. Right. Yeah, here's Breath of the Wild, too. <laughs> And then when, when it came back from the trailer, he's like, yeah, you know, you notice that, like, there's a lot of sky shit, right? And we're like, yeah, there's a... I was like, yeah, yeah, I noticed there's yeah, a lot funnily, of sky shit. Funnily enough, there is a lot of sky stuff. Yeah, yeah it's like, everything's going upwards. He's like, yeah, the only thing that went down was Link onto a floating castle in the sky. It's like... It's, I'm like, all right, this is great. This is great. This is awesome. And he's like, yeah, but that's really buggy. So we're gonna... We're really working hard on that because, you know, we we mastered the ground aspect of Zelda. Let's go to the sky aspect of it. So now you can do both in the same game. And we're like, okay, that's why I love Nintendo. Nintendo's like, we're trying to be better. Whereas like, I don't know. All the... There's like, so many games that come out. Like that, that, that's the big problem. There's so many games that come out and they're just like. There's so many day one patches. And yeah. they're all 40 to 100 gigabytes. Yeah. <laughs> like and, and it, it sucks because like I'd say. I don't know, like the PC crowd, like if it's a PC only game, the mm. PC crowd's pretty forgiving, I'd say. Like, yeah, yeah sure, because, we bash on it if it's like broken. Because you know why? They mastered the marketing of it. They're like, yeah, yeah this is a, this is an open beta, but you have to pay fifteen dollars to get it. Yep. Y- yeah, and then we're still releasing cosmetics for it in an open beta, and we're like. Yep. Hey, at least he's honest. The, the, the game's not fucking done, but I'll pay for it. It conceptually is fun. Like, No Man's Sky, conceptually, that's fun. I want to go to planets and blow them. Like, you know, like, this is... No, like, games don't do that anymore. You're right. Like, they're just they're just half half, half digging everything, dude. Yeah. Everything's I mean, half half chub. Everything's a half chub. It's crazy. 
and it sucks for games like cyberpunk for example like oh my god that was i like a look i get it if you've said like tw- i think they said 2021 or 2020 whatever whenever that comes out COVID has made everything blur together but right. it's like you know what i've been a quality assurance person that's that's a fun fact maybe people don't know about me right there's no way all those bugs slip past you and i get it you gotta push for a release date you've already delayed delayed it twice just come out a third time and be like yo we still need more time sorry it would have been a so much more different game it's like it all in all it looks fun it had a lot to it it was just so broken and i think still is quite broken it, that game it tanked cd project almost like yeah there was so much hype for it because like at the end of the day we we're like yo you're gonna do something like the witcher but with cyberpunk and keanu the worst part reeves. Was, <laughs> you know and keanu reeves is in it and the worst part is the story was amazing like yeah. the story mode was a 10 like i would say it was a 10 out of 10 not because it's perfect but because it was just like the story was dope like it was great yeah it's good storytelling you're like it's just a great story. I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the storyline is actually really deep, and there's multiple paths, and like, it's great. It's fun. The source they they honored the source material very well. Like it was, yeah, the game just wasn't wasn't functioning right. Like, you, and yeah, at some point in the game, if you saved, if you're the more you progressed in the game, the more riskier it was to save the game because your 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 save could corrupt your your entire save file or your or your console. Like, oh yeah. my god, dude. And it's shit like that, that that should be caught early on. Like, a lot of the bugs that are shown, like, when, when the game launched, a lot of the bugs that were shown are so easy to recreate. And it's like, how are you not picking this up? Because normally, especially a big company like that, you're probably hiring, like, three different quality assurance teams. And they've they're probably playing it constantly. And it's like, how does nobody come back to you and be like, hey, I tried it on the PC with a 1060. I tried it on the PC with a 1080 and I tried it on the PC with 2080. And I didn't get that bug once. Like, what? How do you go through it? Unless, unless they just hired poor quality assurance, but there's so many small bugs. And like company, like you said, companies keep doing this. They keep releasing games with so many bugs. And it'll be like a year before they even acknowledge that it was a problem. Like, I remember when I bought a game, I didn't have to worry about bugs. Yeah. I mean, there was, like, I mean, there was very little chances of patching the game, right? Like, a patch would actually be an expansion, like, yeah. for a game. Or, like, a new, a new uh, like, release of a game. Like, a new batch of releases. Yeah. But, like, that rarely happened. Like, you, when you bought a game back in the day, like, there were secrets, you know? There was, like, surprises. There's things that are on the game that you could unlock for free. Nowadays, the only the only surprise I get is on my credit card bill when I see the first season pass of like I don't know Valorant has to be like gone through my fucking thing. And I love I mean I love Val like that that was a different game. That's a bad example, but like I don't know like Final Fantasy 17 like fuck like great. I, yeah. Why did you charge me randomly for this season pass? Like what? I, I miss when I got a game. One, I didn't have to wait four hours to download a hundred gigabyte patch. And two, like it was it was great. It was like I, I, I don't have to connect to the internet to check if I'm pirated this game. And I get like that's a necessity, right? Because people steal games all the time. But like, you know, I just wanted to sit down, play the game, enjoy it. And like, yeah, I paid for it. Like I don't I don't mind. Like this is worth it. And then yeah, this doesn't feel worth it anymore because I I could pay for it now, but I know it's not complete. Yeah, it, it's always better to wait. It's always better to wait for it to go on sale on Steam, because like that game's gonna come out, and like all of a sudden you're gonna like save your file. Nope, corrupt. You're gonna press like left and right. All of a sudden your your character explodes for no reason. It's so buggy, and that and like that this E three is just like it's a little disappointing because like. You can kind of see every company kind of heading that way. They're just like, you yeah. like the franchise, right? It's like, yeah, we like the franchise because at some, at one point in this franchise lifetime, you made a series of really good games and got my trust. And and I loved it. I fell in love with that memory. And then I'm only sticking around because 
you guys have that potential to recreate it, but you're not doing it. You know, you're not doing it. Like you're not doing it at all. And it's hurting my heart because like video games is more than just like a child's thing nowadays. It's our lives. It's our identity. It's social now. Right. And, and, and like, I, I just hate seeing that. Like there are so many franchises. I, I love, I love, I love, I love. And they've gone to shit. They've gone to fucking trash. I can't list them because like, I don't want to offend all those companies. But then like Nintendo comes in, they're just like, Pokemon's still going to be fine, buddy. Mario's still going to jump. And don't worry, that pipeline, when you go down that pipeline, your game's not going to, you're not going to go down the shit, baby. This is going to be a Gooba and a Koopa Troopa you got to stop on. And every time I go down that pipe, yeah, there's a Koopa I have to tri- like stop on. It's great. Uh, it's consistent, right? And they definitely always pull those nostalgic heartstrings because even Pokemon is a, an amazing example of like, you know, sure, there might be some bad Pokemon games. <clears throat> Sun and uh, but is it really bad? It's is that really a bad? <laughs> is there a bad Pokemon? It might be boring in, co- in, in comparison. Yeah. Right. But I, I've never had a terrible time. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing at the end of the day, like even like like we were talking about at the beginning when they announced um the mario party classic and the wario where it was like yo i'm gonna enjoy those i don't even care if i'm paying for those again because they're worth paying for that i can play them one i can play them online multiplayer and two they're hd remastered and this time they're actually hd remastered yeah that's awesome i mean it's n64 to the switch that's a big remaster that's a huge remaster it's like you that's almost ground. It, it is ground up. What am I talking about? It's ground up. It's insane. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people are feeling like that, where they they feel like they're they're growing up and growing out of games, or like they have a small niche. Because that's how I felt the past couple of years. Yeah. And uh, it is weird. It is weird to see how gaming is evolving. And in, you know, there's something for everyone. But I think uh, COVID it's, definitely it's, hasn't helped that. Each each year, it feels like there's less things for me. And yeah, like I'm happy to see. I'm happy to see games like get bigger, but I always thought like they'll never take away like the thing that I what I loved about games, which was like you know the simple but difficult to master, but like advanced mechanics, like things that make me want to like get better at the game. You know, nowadays it's like all like all these other games they look amazing, they have amazing storytelling. I'm happy nowadays. I just watch like pe- other people play video games. I don't really play them anymore. And, there was a time where I was like super excited to like sit down and journey through like the forest with my sword and then level up and get a technique because I mastered a combo, right? Or like I managed to find the secret weakness to the dragon boss. It's like that's not there anymore. It's just like, yeah, uh here's dude with with crazy hair and 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 he has a sword. And you know what we like about him? What do you like about him, dude? What do you like about him? Well, you got to pay the DLC to find out. Fuck. <laughs> you fucking serious? Um, and you know, the thing is too, right? Like a lot of companies are, no, I wouldn't say a lot of them, but we're lacking on a lot of storytelling too. Like ever since, since uh, Telltale, you know, Telltale went under, that felt like a huge hit to story games. This is, you know, that's the Walking Dead gone. That's the Wolf Among Us sequel gone. All those games. And I get oh, it. Dude, I was a seven. I was a seven max nerd. I love seven max. Oh, so much. dude, <laughs> just and it was just sad because it's like other companies are trying to cover that hole, like like uh, Square Equinox with uh, uh, yeah Enix right yeah. or yeah Enix sorry, uh, with uh, Life is Strange, and you know I think they make another one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but but like Life is Strange, the fans that love that the game is like I read I read the synopsis. It's a great, great story, great game. Not for me. What I, I wanted my oddball rabbit guy and dog detective go through town talking to Bosco, right? Like that's like I don't know, that was kind of my vibe. And like there, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone for me. Like I remember when remember when games made you feel like a superhero? Yeah. Yeah. Now like literally Marvel. Like Mar I mean Marvel. Oh, is, don't get me started on Marvel, please. Look, look at that Square Enix. Like, but Square Enix just rebrand themselves as Marvel Studios, the game department. Because that's basically what they are now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And, and the occasional Final Fantasy. <laughs> and the occasional Final Fantasy. It's like, yeah, well, we still like Japanese guys with swords, but uh, 
You like Spider Man pays our bills. <laughs> Spider Man pays our bills. Oh uh, man, I don't get me started on the Marvel games. One thing I don't understand, and they've done it with like all three games now that they've made. Why are we not making the characters look like they look in the movies? That's what they're popular for. Why are we making them look like completely different people? And and it doesn't really. The Spider Man game felt like Spider Man. I actually liked that game a lot. Right? That was cool. That's but, the only one I've heard good things about, though. Yeah, every other one is kind of like... I played games to, like... To escape and become something else, right? I didn't want the game to feel like me. I feel terrible. <laughs> I want to feel like a superhero. Right? I don't want I don't want the superhero to have a... Like, the person to have a superhero skin. I want to feel like, you know, I could do anything that I can't do in real life. And... Yeah, that's there. That's not there. And then like I, I'm, and then that's why there's so many remakes are like doing well because like they clearly haven't recaptured the magic. <laughs> yeah, it's that nostalgia. That's the only reason the remakes are doing so well. Even yeah. like they were saying on the Nintendo stream today, the uh, the Mario 35, it became the second best selling game last year because yeah, it I was it. it was sunshine of like sunshine. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario 64. If so, three of the best nostalgia Mario games. Who yeah. isn't oh. gonna buy that? Who? I bought it day one, and it wasn't even that good. Like I don't get me wrong, the games are good. I love the originals. Oh yeah, it was just an emulator. Bro. Yeah, it was just an emulator, and I paid fifty bucks for an emulator, and I'm happy that I paid fifty bucks for an emulator. You, you paid fifty bucks. I paid eighty. <laughs> oh, just, like. <laughs> And that's the thing, but we're happy to pay that because we know oh, yeah. Nintendo's gonna go, hmm, you gave me the money for this, so now I'm gonna make you a new WarioWare. And I was like, yeah, if yeah. that's the financial <laughs> risk, I love it, because I love WarioWare. That's, I don't know, it was Advanced Wars? Like, you can, like you got someone to remake the first two Advanced Wars? Like, come on, Nintendo, you're sp just release Mother 3, fuckers. <laughs> like, all you had to do to win me forever and i mean you already want to be forever but like yeah like that's like i'll i was i mean i won't sign my first blood child but like mother three please but yeah like they're just yeah i don't know game come out half finished got to i have to wait two full years to perhaps maybe get a complete product after waiting four years for a game cycle and like I know this is rough to hear if you're a game developer it's like i'm not telling you to rush your work and half the time i don't think it's your fault I think it's your investors forcing you and pushing de impossible deadlines for you. And like, there's so much money on the line that you have to release this game to recoup it. Right. And I get it. Like, I get that part. That's the dirtiest side of like this business. It's like, there's I mean, money, ha money controls a lot. And unfortunately there's very few people who can say, fuck you to millions and millions of dollars because they're so confident that they can make millions of their own. And there's very few people that can do that. And I get it. But at the same time, it's like, like, you know, it, it's just tragic. It's just tragic that, like, I I buy a game and I'm not excited. I'm just like, I, just, I know I have to wait another. I have to take out an entire day of my day to get ready to play two hours of a game. Because, like, maybe the first two hours is downloading a patch. The next two hours might be trying to get to the menu. Thanks, Guilty Gear. Try and get to the fucking menu. And then after that, it's like, maybe, maybe the game will, will finally function correctly. And, like, that's not. That's yeah. not the way it should be. It should be, hey, I had a tough day at work. I pop in the video game. I relax, right? It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's rough. You know what else is rough? The end of this episode. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's there, baby. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for us this week. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Refrag TV. And we're going to be back already on Friday. So we're not going to be gone for too long. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week.